Welcome back. It's nice to see you again. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how I made this Harry Potter I Must Not Tell Lies effect for my YouTube shorts. Now, if you already support me on Patreon, you already have access to these files. If you don't, you can get them. Just support me below, link in the description. Either way, you don't need these files to watch this video. I'm gonna walk you through each one and I'm gonna explain the techniques really slowly. That's where this video is gonna be different. So I'm gonna take time on each technique and if you already know it, use the chapter markers below to skip ahead to things that you're more interested in. First things first, if you're going to do anything in Blender, you need an image sequence. For those of you that are familiar with Apple Motion, really good at exporting image sequences. So all you have to do is import your raw clip into Apple Motion and export as an image sequence, and then use that as what you import into Blender. Really straightforward. If you've never created a camera track in Blender, that is a subject all its own, so I will link a full video down below. I will give you the high level. So I've got 12 dots on my hand. Blender needs eight dots to create a successful track. I thought I would just cover my bases, give myself more to work with. You can see there's a lot of blur, so giving myself a little bit more data was always going to be helpful. Now once I've got a tracker placed on each of these dots, I just wanted to make sure I had good settings. Now if I select this tracker right here, you can see over here on the right that the motion model I used was A-fine. There's a lot of movement in this shot. I might have benefited from perspective, but I always like to start with A-fine just a little faster. And then I might have used previous frame that might have saved me some headache, but I stuck with keyframe because it got most of the job done. The biggest thing is you wanna make sure in a shot like this that normalize is set on your trackers. Lots of movement, lots of change in shadow, color shifts, normalize helps with all of that. Once I have all of these, I can just select them all and come up here and do create plain track. And that makes it so I have a flat image that represents the contents of those uh, trackers. And so in this case, the back of my hand. Once you have your plain track set, you can actually adjust the points and make it so that the plain track only captures the part of your subject that you want. In my case, I tried to make it so my rectangle had points that more or less matched the perspective so that you can see my hand is sort of at an angle, make it look like a rectangle that's turned at an angle to match my hand. This just made it so that it's easier to composite it with flat text on top of it, and then the distortion would happen and make it look like the flat text was then twisted and laid on the back of my hand. Once you have that, you just export it and you're good to go. If you want more details on that, another link to the description on how to take real advantage of plain trackers to do things like tattoo removal. Speaking of tattoo removal, we want to get rid of these motion tracker dots. So if we come back here, you can actually see I tried a couple different things to get rid of the motion tracker dots and they worked with various levels of success. So my first attempt was, you can see, I photoshopped out the dots once I had this plane tracked. And you can kind of see if I go back and forth between these, you can sort of see the dots where, the, where they used to be and the Photoshop cleaned them up. And in a video, if you didn't know what you were looking for, this works pretty well. The problem is my scene has too much lighting change and this was just really obvious. You could see these little dots floating above and so it just didn't look good. Instead of photoshopping them out and then compositing it in later, I kept it all in Blender. What I did was basically cut out plain areas of skin and slid them over so that they were covering other areas of skin and the fact that they were in the video rather than in a still image meant that they adapted to lighting. And I'll show you that breakdown in a second once we get back into compositing in Blender. So now that we have a motion tracked hand with the motion tracking dots removed, let's talk about the text. You can see over here in Apple Motion, I've got this gradient reveal, and this is for one layer of text that I use as sort of a inflamed area around the skin, making it look like it's you know a little bit red because it got cut. And then the more interesting one that's actually worth talking about is the spelling out of each letter. Basically, I pulled this off was because I wrote this text on an iPad, I just exported it as a PNG with transparent background. Procreate app is great for that, really straightforward and simple. And then brought it into Apple Motion so I could mask it and do the reveal effect. So if I expand my layers here, you can see my base layer, this is just the image, layer copy three. And then above it, I have a group that I've called write on, which is basically the mask that reveals all the individual pieces. 
If I come up here to the inspector, you can actually see that right on is just set to stencil alpha. That basically means that anything that is outside of that doesn't get shown. So if I change it to normal, you can see these are just a bunch of Bezier paths that I'm drawing on. Uh, color doesn't matter because they're just a mask. So white lines traced over. If I drill into this layer group, you can see all these Bezier paths. And so if I just disable these write-ons, you can kind of see the individual letters being spelled out. So in this case, uh, if I look at the S, I drew the path from top to bottom, which means that when I apply the write-on effect, it goes from top to bottom. If I had drawn it from bottom to top, it would go the opposite direction, which of course, if you did that by accident in the write-on properties, you can reverse it, so it's not a big deal. But all I had to do was just go through and trace each individual letter. And you can see they're not perfect, like you can see mismatches in there, but they're close enough that the mask and everything blends together with my skin and with the movement of the video, you really can't tell that these Bezier paths are not perfectly aligned to the written text. Like it looks really good. With that main text and then the outline bleeding text all exported as separate video files, you can see back over here in Blender sort of a preview of what it looks like. Because it's matched, you can see that it lines up. Now, this is a version uh, where you can see the dots that I talked about earlier, how with the lighting change, they just don't quite match up. So this isn't what ends up in the final export, but this is something I had pulled in with the plane track so that you could actually see how it looks. Now, what I did end up doing is over here in the masking tab, again, link in the description for full details, but you can see these little rectangular masks that I drew around the dots and then parented them to the tracking markers. And that's it. It just gives me the mask data I need to then bring it into the compositor and do the effect I showed you where I cut out skin and slid it over. So let's jump over to the compositor and show you how I put out each individual piece and then brought that all back into Apple Motion for the final composite. All right, so this is my Blender compositing tree. I know what everybody says. They look intimidating, but when you're building your own, this is really straightforward. So let me show you individual pieces. Now the most important part that comes out of a plane track is this plane track deform node. You can see by default it automatically picks the right camera and the right plane track because there is only one in my entire project, which is great. What this does is if I apply this to any flat image or video, it makes it move like the back of my hand. So you can see originally I had it wired up to the little dots, which is what didn't work, but I left it in here so you can see that's what I did. You just wire that into the image, send that over either to an alpha over, which is just the equivalent of stacking transparent layers on top of each other, or you can send it straight out to the viewer or to the compositor. So let's just jump back down here to what did work. You can see my two different layers I talked about of text. So if I plug them into here, you can see sort of in this viewer in the background, uh, let me plug this uh, alpha over into the composite and into the viewer. Uh, composite is what exports, viewer is what you see behind me. You can see that puts the text onto the back of my hand. I can do that with either of them. Uh, in this case, I need to skip forward in the timeline a little bit, but you can see it makes them match the movement. That's the power of the plane track to form node. It's why we're using Blender is to get the power of this node. So what I did was I just took each of these individually. I didn't bother with the alpha over and ta-da, I got transparent videos that I could then composite later in Apple Motion with different blend modes and things like that. And so that's all I did, as I did that one by one for each of these text layers, exported them so I can bring them into Apple Motion. And I've got text that matches the movement of the back of my hand. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to get a version of the video file out that has my hand with no tracking markers. And I showed you conceptually how that works, but let me show you practically how that works. So if you remember, I drew some masks on my movie clip. So I've got my movie clip starting down here, and I've got my mask right up here. Now the mask source, I've only got one mask in my whole project, so it picks the right thing. And I made sure to feather it. Now you can see if I come in here to the dilate erode, that expands or contracts the thing that I've drawn a mask around. Now in this case, uh, I just wanted to feather it and I gave it a nice big feather distance. And you, if you remember from my example, that's what makes it blend in really nicely. And so if I use alpha over, which again is just like layer stacking in Photoshop or Pixelmator, I can take my original movie clip and I can take the translation data to slide it over a little bit. In this case, 
36 and 70 pixels in the X and Y direction. And I plug that into one layer and I plug the other into the top layer. So I have two versions of the same clip stacked on top of each other. They're just slightly offset. And then I use my mask that has been feathered to cut a hole. You see, I can plug this into the viewer and ta-da, it looks like my motion trackers are missing. Now there are some small um, imperfections in it, but uh, I would bet that most people wouldn't have even guessed that there were this many motion trackers on the back of my hand to begin with. So I think it actually works really, really well. That's it. We finally have all of the layers ready to go. We just need to pull them into Apple Motion. So here's what I've got. This is the final composite that I used to export the video uh, before I brought it into Final Cut and just trimmed it up and did some colors. Uh, and you can see it looks pretty good. You can see the red outline on the text and stuff that makes it look like irritated skin. I, I think it came out really good. So let's break down the layers. First things first, uh, let's disable these. You can see I've got my clip, which is my original clip. So here we have our main background clip, just with the tracking dots. I had this here as a base, but really it's not necessary. This clip is a version where I tried to use the motion tracking data, and instead of replacing it with photoshopped erases, I replaced it with blurs. Didn't work. So this is the final one. This is the translated markers. Now, I could get rid of the other two layers. They're not really adding anything, but I wanted them there so that you could see the step and progression of what the things I tried. And I think it's no question way better than the blurred version. Doesn't have the light artifacting that the uh, photoshopped version does. So translated markers, looks great. Next is the main text. The only thing that I needed to do here was make it so that the blend mode matched what I wanted it to so that it showed up correctly on the skin. I wanted the shadows and the color of the skin underneath it to affect the actual color. So it wasn't just flat text. And you can see, just multiply blend mode. Really simple. I could have done more fancy things, like I could have applied a warp or something to this to get it to match my tendons a little bit better, but for the time that I had, I just left it at it as is, and I think that the blend mode was enough to really take it to the next level. And then finally was the irritated skin layer, which is what I was calling the fill text, and that's the one that just had the reveal swiping from top left to top right. Match Move did the same. The only difference was that I did soft light. Now this layer is the reason why I brought it into Apple Motion really is I wanted flexibility. So in this case, I added a Gaussian blur. I could have done that in Blender, but Blender is just slower to get things out and to get feedback. And the, the Gaussian blur really makes a difference in making it look like just an irritated layer of skin around the cut text. So with that, I put it all together in Apple Motion, exported it to Final Cut, and did my final color corrections, and I was done. Came out really good. Every time I do a project like this, I dump all of the project files for my patrons so you can pull them apart and do whatever you want with them. All right, with that said, we'll catch you on the next one.